Hi guys, Shirley Peters here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another acrylic painting. And I shall be doing a landscape. I think that's the best way I can show it to you. I did a couple of printouts. That one came out quite interestingly. I don't know if you can see that properly. See the difference in color? Yeah. So anyway, the, the way I like it is the blue, not the purple. I think the purple is because I ran out of actual. So I'll be working for color reference. I'll be working from my computer. I think that's the easiest way. So if you don't want to print out waste of ink, you don't need to print out a page. Um, I tend to do it just so that I can, I can not have to turn around too much and um, look at my computer screen which is a little bit off-putting and you guys can see how I'm referring the real life version of me referring to the canvas and the, um, the picture the reference sometimes I like I know it seems a bit silly but to get a projector and to shine it up on a large wall and stand in front of it and paint as if I'm plain airing that's a fun thing to do I might do that one day so um, anyway the way I'm going to start here is, oh, I've got my acrylic, acrylic paints in the pot ready to go. I don't need to squeeze anything out. I've got all the colors I'm likely to use. And I've got a couple of big brushes here that, I've, um, that I like to use, like a whopping great big three inch, four inch, eight centimeter anyway. Now, um, somewhere here I've got charcoal. This will do me. I think I've got a better one, but just a little stub. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to be putting the, the charcoal down as my um, as a guide for the. Mm, that one's not very good. Even though this colour's not accurate, it's a paler print, and I can get a better idea of the of the layout. Sometimes I I just like to sort of have a squeeze like that, as if I'm getting a feel for what's the center and even though that's about the center I'm going to start I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit there's dark in the distance there I'm going to start with that come in a little bit rocks oh and this has got a straight line I'm going to ignore that straight line I'm just going to give it a bit of a curve and there's rocks in the foreground here more there I hope you can see that all right, can you, with the, uh, oops, I'll just get my, I'm doing a backup on my iPhone, so just in case. I do tend to lose things. I'm not very, I'm not a cinematographer, that's for sure. Now, there's a, a cliff face there, so I'm drawing that in. A couple of flat areas here in the foreground. And those rocks really come out in the middle of the waterway. So the beauty of a landscape is it does not have to be accurate. So you can make it up, you can use what you can see and you can make up a fantasy world all of your own. Some trees at the back there and some trees here. I won't necessarily be putting all of these trees in, I shall definitely be um, picking and choosing a few so that's the ferneries the fern there a couple more trees here I want to add some sky up here there's too many trees I want to have those thinned out a little bit and there will be I want to put a hint of a landscape in behind so a little hill way out in the distance there but I'll be covering that up with mainly um, this at couple of big hill side things happening. One tree will come out of that area and there's another tree that comes right across from the bottom here. I'll just put that into the corner and here there'll be a couple of more ferns, sticks, whatever. Now that said I'm going to darken up some areas here using the charcoal so that I get an idea of composition. If I squint my eyes, I want to see how, how much of this is going to be dark 
And the beauty of both oil and acrylic is you can draw in with charcoal the shapes and the, the lights and darks at this stage and get your drawing pretty accurate before you start adding paint. When I say accurate, not necessarily accurate to what you're seeing, but accurate to what you'd like to produce in your own painting, in your own mind. This way you can get some, if I get lights and darks in now, I can stand back and go, yep, that's pretty much what I had in mind. So that's it. Ferns, trees, back, might make them thicker than what they are. And some dark areas coming down like that through the trees. Okay, gentle blow off. I'll just smudge some of these in, the dark areas so they stay dark. Sometimes I use my, my hair dryer at this stage and blow it all off, but I won't do that. I'll just clean up some of that charcoal's fallen down the page. Get some of those whites back. Right, now I have an um, old-fashioned method of fix it, fixing and I use hairspray. And uh, oh, if you want to buy fixative, charcoal fixative, that's fine, do so. But I find hairsprays much the same. Once I put this on and once it dries, it will lock that charcoal down pretty well. I'm fairly, I'm a bit heavy handed. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do it that, hard, that, that um, strong. So I hope you can see this um, work all right. I hope it's not reflecting too badly in the uh, lights. So I'm just gonna wait a minute to, for it to dry. Meanwhile, I'll start by putting a couple of colors onto plates. And what I use is a um, spatula, uh, palette knife, and I'll pick out some, some colors. In this case, I'm going to be doing a blue, um, a cerulean blue, uh, wipe that off, and ultramarine blue. And I might put out a bit of yellow, start mixing up a, gr a green. To do that, I'll go to another knife. I like to keep, try and keep these colours as pristine as possible. Oops. Probably need a fair bit of yellow in the end. This is a very green painting and I tend to not, I don't have green pre-squeezed from a tube. I like to make my own green. So, see if that's dried yet. I'll find a clean finger and rub it on, see if it's going to fix still coming off a little bit still a bit loose but not not look see there's a relatively clean thumb and there you go still relatively clean so it's good enough that's fine for me and I'll be doing so many layers on a painting like this this early stage is just it's going to be a dim memory later on it's going to be buried deep unless of course if I, get, if I get a couple of strokes that are really pretty and really lovely, I might just, I might try and leave them and not go over them. But on the whole, nearly everything I do, I have to go over a couple of times. So I'm just cleaning off that brush. So I'm going to start with the light, bright blue water. And uh, I do think it is mainly this, oops, I'll make sure I've got a clean brush. If you excuse me for a minute, I'm going to go outside and just get clean water. Basics, isn't it? Turn it off. Okay. Right, where was I? Because I've already mixed a lot of medium into my paints when I'm putting them in my pan, in my box, tackle box. I find that I don't need to use any more medium. Enough, I have enough, so water at this stage 
is, um, is adequate. So I tend to thin my paint now with water. So I'm going to half close my eyes and uh, get the right picture out that I'm working from. I've got a couple here, of course. Uh, half close my eyes. That water at the back is very, very, even though it's blue, it's actually quite dark. But see, this is where I have to be careful that I'm, when you're working from photograph as opposed to what's on the screen of the computer, on the back of your camera for that matter. I'm just going to put this blue down here. It's quite dark here. Even though these little details are not necessary, sometimes I like to put them in because it gives me a feel for what I might do later on. I run that water in a bit of a pattern. At this stage, it's very much likely to be um, lost in in the running as it runs down the page. It's very because I, I make it so watery at this at this stage. Not much strength in it to hold still. So I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow to the ultramarine blue at this stage. Tell you the truth, I'm having trouble. My lights are not quite bright enough. I'm going to increase the light, which I can do, it's fancy. But I don't want it to be reflecting um, badly. In the, cam in the camera. So what I'm going to do now, put some greenery up here. Of course it's reflecting the green from above. Add, add that in. And I'm just using a corner of this brush to prevent me getting too detailed. It forces me to stay loose. And I just zigzag it down the page, and it gives you lovely detail that you can't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally find with a small brush. Or you would, but it takes forever. This way, it's fast. Okay. By putting in these horizontal lines, I'm just giving an indication of water flowing. If I look closely at these. Photographs I can see I need to come into a bit of uh, warm brown at the moment, so I'll just put some of that out. Might even put a bit of orange and my favourite burnt umber. So I've almost got some, I've got basic, some primaries, primaries here and uh, even though they're not their secondaries and ter tertiaries, <laughs> I've got the yellow, the blue, the reddy colour and the brown. Now with these colours I should be able to make, I should be able to make some good combinations. I'm just going to use the corner of my big brush here and get a little bit of, um, muddy brown colours into this shadow, dark shadow area. It comes down there a bit. When you're looking at your, your photograph you just have to follow it without thinking too much because it'll all come together in the end, that's what I find. But, uh, at the time you think, oh that's weird, why am I doing that? But if you're just painting what you can see in your photograph, it does come good. So. I'm going to just blend that in a little bit. There's a couple of spots of very light yellow from the sun coming down. While that's all wet, I'll put those in. Put the orange around the side. 
can run it back there a little bit into those blue blend it back into the page into the uh, page <laughs> into the scene I'm looking down at my I'm sorry if I keep bending my head down I'm looking at my computer screen which is just down here and it's so bright and lovely that I can um, oh, actually that's something I need to tell you about just did that when I lifted it up when it's on a computer screen like this you can zoom right in and look at those details, especially later on. I'm painting these yellow parts here. And I've got this light blue happening. And then this green with the vertical reflections. So the green is where it's smooth and it's reflecting like glass. And the light blue is where it's rippling and moving. And I'm getting the sky reflection instead of the distant hills but it just helps to be able to blow it up like that but I have it down there just out of out of screen out of use out of uh, view of the screen so you know what I'm looking at kind of liking this now anyway without there being this is where it, uh, at a stage where sometimes I might I might not keep layering I might just let that be a la prima which is mm, one go ah yeah so I'll put some dark colors in here I'll just pull those down make it look vertical like a vertical reflection back here that area in vertical within that maybe take another brush and oh where's a suitable brush it's soft enough one of the ones I had prepared earlier I hadn't thought that was good oops sorry might be a bit loud just drag down a few details in that area if you make them vertical, it looks like it's reflected. That's the trick. And holding my brush up. Kind of is needs a little bit of softness so I'm not able to give it so I'll go back and put the darker using the smaller brush now because I just want that one area to be fairly accurate just soften that up I've, I've, I've taken too much out so I've put some back and while I'm there just pull into the water and one is assuming that water is coming around the bend so right back here I'm going to give it a bit of a cliff face feel in other words pitch black even though it's in the distance it should be pale <laughs> this is where I break the rules I still go for bright colors in the distance sometimes so I'm just going to look at some darks here with my smaller brush. Oop. Yeah, I just dropped a bit of... Mm. Just when I'm getting this a la prima look, I drop water into it. So I did come over here and put a few um, marks into this area look like it's reflecting and I can easily come back here later and add white to this to 
pop it out a bit more and I probably will down here in these areas. Oops. Now I'll just go back to my large brush because I do want to keep going with the outer, outer rims. That's a real dark green that I've got over on the right side where it's virtually in full shadow. Okay, dark green to almost black. And I'll just do it in sections so that I can see. Hills and valleys. Green, they've got the blue, the burnt umber mixed together to give this beautiful dark, 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 dark black. Take it out there. Now I've lost all my skylight at the moment in the studio because it's getting dark outside. So I shall start, I'll put some more lights on in a minute for myself. So it's interesting what you can see. Um, in these deep shadows, when you've got it on the computer, you can lighten them up a little bit. Whereas your photograph, you're limited with your photograph to what you took. Oh, someone's knocking at the door. I think it's honey. Oh, sorry, I'm talking to the wrong camera. I'll just clean up and let the puppy in. Turn the lights on. <laughs> it's a bit better, isn't it? I shall continue. It's, um, it's only about five o'clock, I think. Uh, Time-wise, yeah, it's five o'clock. On the, so it's getting dark um, about this time. It's midwinter here, and uh, you guys over there in uh, up north in America and England. You've got our sunshine at the moment. I hope you're looking after it, making use of it. Although if you're like us, you might be half shut, shut down anyway. So I'll just put some more blue there, fill that area. Now there's lovely greens underneath the... I'll mix up a green. I don't have a green already done, but I'll use the cerulean blue and the lemon yellow and make a nice shady bluey green there going to be underneath that area. Run it around the sides. I'll put it right through this spot. No need to not do it. If you put it through fairly light you can still see your charcoal marks underneath so you're not going to be, even though you're covering things up, you can still come back later and lighten over the top of that. Now in the distance I have got a very pale yellow sunny sunshine up there. And what I do is put the paint down, dip into the water and then I spread the paint out a bit more with the brush and just water. So if I just do that. It's giving me, it's like blocking in overall colours. I'm going to go a little bit darker at the top there. I can see that's required. And what I want to do is some sky over in the top right corner, which I might need to go for another. When I want to put in a pure colour, I, I often have to um, um, <sighs> sorry, just got distracted. When I put in a pure colour, I have to go for a new plate. 
and I'll take some of the colour from the other um, um, plate. I'll grab some. I grab some ridiculously bright. What have I got here? Here's another little video I've made recently, which is uh, to just show you how to do the well to show you that you should be doing swatches of your paints and cobalt turquoise cool light means I can tell you also <laughs> what what colors I'm using so just for the sky I just want to do something a little bit that's different it should be exactly it should be reflective in the water but sometimes if the water's dirty and there's stuff in the water it's not going to happen is it you are going to be looking at slightly different colors There's that one. I'll add in a bit of the other blues. Even, even. I'll grab out some more of the. So this is how I control the um, acrylic paint. I end up using a lot, but I don't want it all out at once because I haven't got a big enough palette. Blue across the top there. I'll mess it around a bit because I don't want it to be too neat and tidy. Coming down here, it's going to be a landscape in the distance. So I wouldn't say that my charcoal was totally locked down. It is moving a bit underneath this paint. I will give you that. But if you're precious and you're doing a really neat little painting, of course, you wouldn't be doing this style. This is more for your gung-ho um, rough style, I guess you'd call it, expressionistic. So I'm going to just finish putting those in there. I need some yellow. I think I've got it underneath this plate. That'll be a bit of a problem. So hills at the back here. to be a little bit paler. They're going to be showing through the trees. They don't live on their own. They're just going to be light patches here and there. Just need a really good rag somewhere. Lost my rag, I've walked away with it. So I'm using paper, but I'm not as happy with paper when I'm doing this type of thing. Right, that's in the distance. It's not going to be very easy to see because it's going to be something that you will just glimpse through the uh, trees at. Just give me background, foreground, um, some bright green moss on that. Beautiful on that rock. That's a rock there. Dark blue. Okay. Two palettes on the go. Just want to get this really, really dark colour here. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. That's ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Oops. Oops. They've got lots of leaves floating over. They've got some leaves in the foreground, so I'll just keep, I'll run that down right to the edge. Slight variations. Not all over one colour. Light, light and dark, light and dark everywhere. And you don't have to care at this stage how light, how dark. Just put it on. Be really casual with it. sticks and stones in there which I'll fix up later. Now in this area here is a very deep, I think it's an orangey greeny colour so it's going to be really hard to pick. It's going to be one of those colours. I'll just mix everything together and hope I can come across the right. I think it only goes that high. I need more yellow in it. So 
I'm mixing as I go a bit more red into it. Hmm, not sure I've got it yet. I think I need to go much darker, which means wait for that to dry because you can't put dark, oops, you can't put dark over the top of light. You have to really um, dark first, then let it dry. Um, if it's not dark enough, go again. But once I've got light on there, I can't um, darken it, not till I've dried it off. So I'll just add a little bit of the greeny colours here. And then I'm going to kind of put a brown rock, but it's going to be one of those neutral shades because it's going back here. I'll start with it this colour. But it's one of those, hmm, I think it needs to be bluer. Yeah. Just get a few more blues out. I've got a bit, a bit of blue here and there. Getting close to the end of my first stage. So this could be the end of video one, in which case the next one will be straight away after this, just for the sake of making it easy to upload. I'll divide it into a couple of videos. Of course, you guys, you know, if, if you're watching this video, it means it's worked, but the, I can assure you, I often do videos where they don't work. Either, there's a couple of reasons they don't. One is I discover that I haven't had the camera rolling. That's, you know. And then there's another one that is where the painting turns out absolutely awful. And I think, I oh, can't even save it. So one of these days I'll scrape those bits together and you can see all my failures. <laughs> but in the meantime, I shall, I'll just clean up a little bit now. And I'll let, what I'm doing is I'm letting that dry. At this stage, I like to do, this is why I love acrylics. Um, you let each stage dry totally. It's wet now. Um, I'm really wet. So if once in about an hour's time, that will be totally dry. And I will then start putting on new layers of um, paint and it'll be opaque now. This has been all pretty transparent. Now I'll be changing over to the opaque.